What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. This right here is a Kirkland Signature Premium Large Grade AA White Egg. This is my forehead. This is what Matt Bibby, EVP of Strategic Marketing at EA looks like after 25 years of working at EA and then talking to GameIndustry.biz not knowing why people don't like EA. Oh God. <laughs> okay, so maybe that was a little bit outrageous and over the top and unnecessary, but I'm trying to prove a point with Electronic Arts and how out of touch they are with reality when it comes to talking about the video game industry at large and in this instance, GameIndustry.biz and talking about the perception that EA has with their clients, with their customers and with society in general when trying to sell games and they just don't have a clue with what's going on, either that or it's blissful ignorance. They just, they just don't want to know that they are the bad guy. In fact, so much so that they're denying the fact that they even are the bad guy and are confused why people think EA is a bad company in the first place. In a recent article published by GamesIndustry.biz, there was an interview with Matt Bilby, EVP of Strategic Growth at EA. He was quoted as saying, 25 years at EA and I still struggle with the external perception that we're just a bunch of bad guys. We love making and playing games. Unfortunately, when we make mistakes on games, the world knows about it because it's of size and scale. But that's not necessarily true because if every time a gigantic AAA publisher screwed up, they'd all have the same exact perception from external gamers and people in the media industry at large. But they don't. EA is looked at as target enemy number one, and all these other companies are looked at as wannabe EA companies, like Ubisoft and WB and a whole slew of other third-party AAA developers trying to squeeze extra money out of the customers. What EA doesn't understand here is they've been fleecing their customers for what feels like years for eternity ever since the mid 90s once their stocks started to rise andrew wilson the ceo of ea has wanted more and more money every single year that goes by to please the shareholders to make more of a bonus at the end of the year to drive more cars i don't know what he wants all this money for but he can't get enough of it that's why EA has this perception in the industry at large. Are they doing some good things to the community? Yeah, they are. They help out these indie developers and publish their games free of cost. They just handle all the charges. They just charge what it costs them to publish it and all the extra money, everything they make goes to the indie dev. Great stuff, something they should be applauded for except for the fact that it's kind of just lip service. They're not doing this for anything other than learning about smaller games and how to steal ideas from them to put them into their bigger games. Is that slimy? Yeah, it kind of is. I mean, they could be making these games internally, but they say they only focus on the big AAA titles internally, and they can't handle these little game ideas, these little things that the community might enjoy in between their play sessions of their larger franchises like FIFA and Star Wars. But EA doesn't understand that customers don't trust them. They don't like them. They don't want to deal with them. Outside of the bro gamers that buy Madden and FIFA every single year, EA has a gigantic image issue and they're doing nothing to fix that. Yes, Apex Legends with Respawn Entertainment was a fantastic diversion from what EA typically does. But that's because Respawn handled it and EA kind of kept their hands off of it. Look at what happened with Anthem. EA rushed that, kicked it out the door, and tried to have a scheduled release of constant updates in the future. But the game itself wasn't ready. EA didn't care. They wanted to get the sales. They wanted to tell their shareholders how many they sold. And I made what, 10 videos leading up to the launch of Anthem? How this was a very bad idea, they should delay it, they should slow it down, make sure they get it right before shoving it out the door trying to make as much money as possible. And I was right. Look at Anthem now. It's basically dead. EA has given up on the scheduled releases and everyone who spent full $60 MSRP day one on that are just kind of left with a shell of a game. 
Yes, some people enjoy it, but those people are few and far between. The overwhelming majority of people who bought Anthem are pissed off with how EA handled it. But the problem with this is, none of that other stuff matters once we see a quote from the guy in charge of strategic growth not knowing why people hate EA. This guy's been with EA for 25 years and he's the executive vice president of strategic growth and struggles with the perception that people think EA is the bad guy. You know why EA is the bad guy? Because every time EA comes out with a game, nobody trusts it and for good reason all these loot box mechanics or i'm sorry surprise mechanics that ea is trying to pull the wool over the eyes of every gamer out there people have gotten wise to it and that's frustrated ea because now they have to find a different way to squeeze money out of gamers instead of i don't know this crazy idea of making a good game and selling it because it's a good game. Apparently, that is lost on EA at large. The problem comes in with the confusing marketing terms and speech that they use trying to twist what people's logic is with all of this. The loot box switched to surprise mechanics, but the week before they argued that with governments, they were talking in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order how it's not going to have any loot boxes. So EA themselves called them loot boxes, just a week before they later argued that their games don't have loot boxes, they use surprise mechanics. So are we supposed to think as a customer that Star Wars Jedi The Fallen Order, it's not going to have loot boxes, but is it going to have surprise mechanics? Are you still going to try to squeeze money out of people in a way that is not necessarily ethical, in a way that you don't need to do if you could just make the game, make it as good as possible and not need to rely on selling extra things to people? Just stick to what's worked in the game industry since the beginning of time and that is making a good game and selling that good game on the merits of being a good game. Why do we need to pay these streamers millions of dollars just to talk about your games? Why do you need all these extra loot box mechanics and all these external microtransactions that are completely devoid of any natural use in any of the games EA makes, yet find a way into them because people just expect it out of EA at this point? That's why people don't trust you, EA. That's why your perception in the entire games media at large is a trash company. And you have done nothing outside of helping some small indie developers publish some games, which I'll give you credit for that. You've done nothing to change that perception outside of working with these smaller companies. And oh, by the way, when you work with these smaller companies, it's just to steal ideas to use those in your bigger games in the future. So yeah, even the good things you do, not necessarily squeaky clean when you take a step back and look at the situation at large. EA has a major image problem. Right now, not only do they have a gigantic egg on their face, but they are lacking any type of trust from any consumer out there, and they are doing nothing to change that except for throwing their hands up and saying, I don't know why people don't think we're good. I don't know why people think we're the bad guys. We make games. We like playing games. No, you like fleecing the customers with microtransactions. You don't care if a game is good or not. You care if the marketing is good. You care if it sells a lot of pre-orders. You care if people buy into EA Access, your monthly streaming service, so that you just get an income every month residually. You don't care if the games are good. Does that help them sell? Maybe, but that's not the priority, which is what is wrong with EA right now. The priority over there is trying to make a game, trying to institute microtransactions, loot boxes, and any other dynamics that should not be in games, but putting them in there because they feel like they have to be in every single EA game because they make them extra money. Billions and billions of dollars every single year. According to EA's chief financial officer, Blake Jorgensen, EA makes 1.3 billion dollars a year in extra content and rising. So from a business perspective, from a shareholder's perspective, hell yeah, I want those microtransactions. Hell yeah, I want you to squeeze more and more into those. I want to make as much money as possible. But from a gamer's perspective, from a human being, from someone who cares about the longevity of a company, what are you doing to yourselves? Yeah, you might make a few bucks here. In fact, a billion or so more right now. But what does that mean for the future of EA? 
Is it sustainable? Is this growth something that you can continue to do and keep growing bigger and bigger and bigger and not worrying about what happens to the brand? No. It's time for EA to stop. It's time for them to take a gigantic step back. And instead of saying, I don't know why people think we're the bad guy, maybe listen to the customers and actually act on what people are telling you. Not just hear them, but do something about it. Change your perception now and stop acting so confused when people say they can't stand EA. Anyways, that's where I'm going to leave this video, but I'd be very interested to hear your take on this situation with EA saying they don't know why people think they're the bad guy. That in itself, clear egg on the face situation, and yeah, they're not going to look very good coming out of this unless they do a 180 right now. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, you stay smashing. Oh god. Ah! <laughs>